on this week's episode, friends don't let friends. Friends don't <laughs> let friends. <laughs> Have a scentless, spooky season. Be the candle you wish to receive in the world. Hello and welcome to Good For You. Good for you, man. Good for you. Good for you. Good for you. Podcast about the things we go to, the purchases that haunt us, and best products, services, and industry happenings in the wellness, well being, and spiritual space. We're going to give you a healthy little dose of fun. We're going to talk about the things that are happening in pop culture, the ones that got away, the things in our cart that are haunting us or ghosting us, our strong opinions that are loosely held. <laughs> We like to call this the Grex. The group text. The group text in your ear. So come say hello. Join us in the audio Grex. Where friends don't let friends get, get scammed. Can you hear my scented candle? No. <laughs> Can I hear the scent? <laughs> no. It's a woodwick. It crackles as it burns. That's their trademark. Oh, right. As if they invented the woodwick. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, have you ever heard of this? <laughs> I don't know if you've ever heard of this. It smells good. It's fall, y'all. I'll light a candle. It's rich bitch scented candle season. Rich bitch autumn. Which bitch, rich bitch, rich bitch. It's, it's Emily Radigowski season. That's all. I don't know. Right. <laughs> I'm personally loving her villain era. Like, you know what happened to her, right? Recently? Oh, her husband? Cheated on her. Yeah. I mean, there was always something suspect about that dude. 100%. I did not like the way that she portrayed him in her book. I was like, he seems like a douchebag. Yeah. It, the only thing I remember, of course, is... He's a producer for A24 and seems extremely unavailable. <laughs> <laughs> Emotionally, spiritually, physically, how do you mean? All of the above. <laughs> I don't actually really remember what she said about him because she didn't really talk about him until the very end of that book. Well, there was, yeah, there was that one story, I think, about like him at a party. His, yeah, exactly. And he like kind of didn't really stand up for her or something. He just was a little wet blanket in that scenario. Anyway, I'm loving her single girl era. She Tough TikTok. Notes. She's tweeting. It's like her and Julia Fox are single mom supremacy. <laughs> and honestly, they're like crushing it. Like between the two of them, I'm like, this is a happy place. Like TikTok is lawful good. As long as I get the two of them on my feet every day. Julia Fox's in the bath TikToks are the best. <laughs> but that are actually like deeply philosophical and oh, yeah. like amazing. I just I just saw one before we hopped on, which Ooh. is like responding to someone who is saying a creator who had said like, oh, m the problem with moms is that they say that we're not relatable. Their friends aren't relatable anymore. And Julia Fox was like, oh, my God, no, it's not that you're not relatable. It's that I'm not relatable because now I have a kid to worry about. And like, I'm in the future and I can't wait for him to go to school. And so I can just like hang out with my friends again. And I was like, damn, Julia Fox is cool. She's cool. Speaking of TikTok, you must be very happy to know that you can now watch every video at 2x speed. I'm so happy, although I can't figure out how to do it. Um, I, I need to do a Google. I felt like an old person. I was like, how do I speed up TikTok? I feel like it might have not rolled out to everyone yet, maybe. Well, or it's rude. just <laughs> so rude. TikTok should know based off my algorithm that I have ADHD and I need to watch things at 2x speed. Come on, use that deep learning. <laughs> They're not catching up. Get it together. How do you feel about the longer descriptions, the video descriptions? Oh, I love it. As an SEO <laughs> girly at heart, I'm like, yeah, that's that's amazing. I mean, I'm. have you started using TikTok to search for things? Because I have. I have for restaurants more and more. Oh, that's cool. I've been looking for it for home decor <laughs> and like Fine. DIY projects. Like when I painted my office using lime wash, I didn't even go to YouTube. I just went straight to TikTok. And then same for how to sand a <laughs> dresser. It's like TikTok will tell me. And oh, yeah. It did. You know, they'll also tell you how to clean your Abyssal little green vacuum cleaner. Wait, I think you still <laughs> have I my owe you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what I did with my super exciting weekend. I <laughs> took it out of the garage and I was like, I need to give this back to M Michelle, so I need to use it. <laughs> Turns Wait, out it works I... really well. Yeah, did it? Because I have the like special, I think, soap still. I don't know if I gave you the soap that goes mm, with it. No, I ended up putting some soap in the water, which worked well. Great. But it is a little tricky to clean. But TikTok has you covered oh, for okay. how to do it. Yeah. Forbidden chocolate milk. That, exactly. When you pour the stuff out. Mm. 
Mm. It's disgusting and amazing. Love love that visual. <laughs> but that's it. Video search. That's the new search. Yeah. 2,000 words is going to like make a big difference in SEO. Like it's it's crazy how much better TikTok is than Instagram. <laughs> and Instagram's been around for 10 years. And TikTok's like, hmm, no, we're going to do it better in like six months. It's all good. It's crazy that Instagram could never get a handle on search. What a <laughs> loss. It's so bad. You can barely find the people you follow. Literally this morning I was like, look, I think I was looking up Ethan and I like couldn't, I <laughs> hey, wouldn't Tom. pop up. <laughs> Did you Ethan change your name? This. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Did he block me? What's going on? <laughs> your status is married on Facebook and he won't even show up. <laughs> yeah. For you. He just replies like it's complicated. If only Instagram would stop, if they would stop like pulling from each other and just like, like let TikTok win. If only Instagram would stop. That's it. Just stop it. Burn it. What? Did I say stand there and look stupid? No, I said burn it. I mean, you did post on the gram for the first time in a long time yesterday. It's been a year. <laughs> if not, really almost year? two or something like that. <laughs> That's why I was like boosted to the top of people's feed. You had a bit of a hard launch. Yeah. There's soft launch and hard launch when you're introducing a significant other to the gram for the first time. And I was like, I can't not post about this if I'm going to post. <laughs> There's been too many trips, too many photos. <laughs> to you're not literally post. moving to the same city together. You kind of have to like, you, know, you got to prime the feed. The cross country tour is about to happen. I'm preparing for winter. <laughs> winter is coming. And so is Wallace. <laughs> yes. It was a hard lunch. I told Josh and he didn't know what a hard lunch was. <laughs> I don't know if he would approve me saying this or if this is fact, but I think he is of the elder millennial generation. <laughs> Ethan's an old elder millennial. I was thinking about that today, actually. I was like, are we middle-aged millennials? Because I couldn't figure out the Splitwise app. Like, mm. I could. I just had really been dragging my feet because I was like, this is, looks too complicated for it's like three months. It's not great UI. It's no, really it's not. not. It's really not. Okay, thank you. I'm they haven't you updated it. It was great <laughs> it, six years ago. That's what it feels like. It's so confusing. But I'm like, okay, it is integrated with Venmo. So I guess that's good. But I was like, am I a middle-aged millennial? Am I a boomer millennial? Is that what I am? Like, what's going on here? No, what, it would be a cross between Gen X and millennial. No, squarely millennial. You and I are like deeply, we're pure deeply. millennial. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> through and through. We are. <laughs> well, the cutoff, I think, is 97 to... 83. No, no, no. For Gen Z, it starts mm. at 97. Yeah, we're we're right in the middle. We're like millennial stellium. Millennial sun, millennial moon, millennial rising. 100%. Speaking of which, hmm. did you see that study about what Gen Z versus millennial prefers brand-wise? I actually didn't even see the millennial parts. I just saw the Gen Z part. The old news. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can't be marketed to. <laughs> You're right. I'm also like wrong. I don't like Target. Wrong. Not me. Which honestly, I should probably take into consideration when I'm looking at these studies about Gen what Gen Z quote unquote is telling us. I think everyone in Gen Z absolutely apparently loves Oreos. Every single one. <laughs> Every it's single because one. of the Chromatica Oreos, the Lady Gaga Oreos, which was a big <laughs> right. lab, let's be honest. The Monsters got mm -hmm. their Oreos. Monsters. I stand that stand group. <laughs> 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 Me too. Oh, did you know that Lady Gaga made the most money she's ever made in a tour at her LA show like two weeks ago, three weeks ago? Whoa, what was it about the show? Made like $9.6 million or something. I have a theory as to why. Tell me. I don't know if you've tried to go to a concert in LA recently, but every concert you would like to go to is like $100 plus for not even great seats at really? all. It's so fucking expensive. Like oh. Harry Styles tickets. Are well, those are always expensive. For sure. And so you start there at the top, but then you even go to people who are, you know, mid-level, mid-tier famous at the Hollywood Bowl or the Hollywood Forever nice venues, but not stadiums. You can't get a non-nosebleed ticket for less than like 70 bucks. Really? I don't know. I just feel like concert tickets are outrageous right now. Yeah. I, we were thinking about going, but my feet were so swollen to a Shrek level size that it wasn't going to happen. But I looked up tickets the day of and they were like $40, but they were probably really bad seats. Day of is yeah. the way to go. You know, you got to 
You got to pivot to theater. What's that? You got to pivot to just like any sort of like live theater performance. Oh, yes. If yes. you want to go see a show. <laughs> I was like, people. theater, what's that? Is that a new <laughs> app where what's you can that? get tickets cheap? <laughs> yeah Sorry. exactly <laughs> it's the gen z app for getting tickets for, for shows <laughs> no no i'm saying go in the opposite direction geriatric matinee you can get honestly i just got matinee. tickets to a really good play called 222 it's a spooky mm. play for like 40 dollars, and we got amazing seats in the orchestra section at the almondson Ooh, i love the almondson that's a good yeah. theater i haven't been to a play in a long time is it it's not a musical just a no, play? it's a spooky play. Spooky, love a spooky play. Yeah, okay. It's, play, it's currently playing on the West End and in, in London, and they're doing a mm. tour, and it's supposed to be really, really good. Adds to cart, haunting my cart. <laughs> there you... Hell yeah! Any faves of late? Yeah, everything's been really good. We've we saw Come Fly Away. We see we've seen we're trying to see more musicals. We're not mm. really like into opera, but I do mm. love a play, and I also mm -hmm. love to read a play. Do you oh, read love read like the script yes. of plays. Love reading a play. That's an elite. Not recently. Experience. I haven't oh. done it probably since college, though. It's so good. It's an hour mm -hmm. and a half, right? Like that's the runtime of a play. So you can get it all done in one night. Three acts. So satisfying. Actually, that's something that's been haunting me. I really want to see Kate Berlant's show in New York. It's off Broadway, but of me course, too. sold out immediately. But they are doing another run. I, I feel like she'll just keep doing it for a while. It's going to be one of those shows. I want to see that. And I think she yeah. has a special on some streaming platform. I don't know which one. She was also part of making the new series, A League of Their Own, like the remake. Right. She's on She's on the acting kit because she's also in Don't Worry Darling. Right. Apparently, she's the only thing worth seeing. Are you going to see it? Mm, I honestly feel like it's one of those that you will forget what it's about two months after you watch it and never think about it again. So I don't know if I'm going to waste my time. Yeah. I don't know. I Maybe they were talking about this on Les Culturistas. Do we need another show where it's like, but what does this say about the real world? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we get it. <laughs> yeah. You know what's keeping me hmm. from Don't Worry Darling is just the runtime. I'm like, I would see Three that movie if it was 90 minutes. Unless if it was 80, 86 minutes. I would see it. That sounds great. That's what I want. But it's so long. It's so long. You have to start that at like, actually with my attention span, I'd have to start at 11 a.m. on a Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I would need to like have, I, I would also need to go to like the Alamo Draft House and have food in the middle because I, <laughs> I just would be like, I'm bored. This is stupid. I want to go home. Yeah. So. I need a break. <laughs> yeah, I need a distraction. But you would also need to make sure you were there because they won't let you in if you don't make it on time. Exactly. They are pretty strict about that, but I kind of I like respect it. that. Like, Ooh, yeah. Love a deadline. Discipline me. <laughs> <laughs> we need it. Not who you want, ladies. Sorry. Sorry. Not, <laughs> not us. Not us. Nope. Nope. I really want to see Barbarian, but Ethan won't see it with me. Who's that? I don't know if I know. Okay, it's a new horror film. It's mm -hmm. about an Airbnb that a girl... Enough said. Like, yep. I'm in. A, basically, the premise is it's like dark, scary, rainy night in Detroit, very late. A girl walks into her Airbnb and there's a guy who's already there. And they're like, they both have been rented the Airbnb for the night. Yes. Okay. And who's starring in it? I saw... Uh, and Justin Long is in it. I don't know who the two other... Oh, wait. It's one of the Scars Guards. As soon as there's a Scars Guard, I don't care if this is a bad movie. It's going to be <laughs> creepy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And he's got to be the bad guy. Like, oh, or sure. something. There's got to be something weird about him. Yeah. So I really... Maybe we should go see it. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, when are we going? <laughs> Sorry, Ethan. You're... <laughs> I love scary movies. And it, because yes. also, they're short. They tend to be short. Who doesn't love an adrenaline rush, too? Amen. Say that's... the two girls with ADHD. <laughs> Truly, that's the reason I go. I can't watch them alone, though. I have to be in theaters or with a friend. It's part of the thrill. Oh, yeah. I used to sometimes watch them when I lived alone in my apartment. And then I was like, this is a horrible mistake. <laughs> Why did I do that? You're Terrible. Like, I'm not going to sleep. That is an act of self-harm. <laughs> <laughs> Truly, that is self-violence. And it's yeah. not okay. <laughs> no. I, I don't condone that. <laughs> but together, okay. yes. Absolutely. <laughs> we can uh, horrify ourselves together. We can be scared together. Okay, great. Add to cart. Barbarian tickets. Speaking of horrific <laughs> things. Good segue. 
<laughs> the state of reproductive rights. <laughs> Actually, really, really terrible, but very informative graphic I saw on the Audacity newsletter on Substack. Oh, cool. It shows all of the states that have completely banned abortion and the other ones that are highly endangered. And then it shows the ones where we're safe and there's just not that many. <laughs> It really does feel like we pay a tax to to live in California and New York, you know, it's Definitely. like things are way more expensive here, but if you have an ectopic pregnancy, you're going to survive, you know? So is your life. Yeah. Right. Wow. So scary. We'll, share, we'll definitely share this link in the show notes. You guys can go check it out, but that's really scary. That's like, that's a lot of, that's more of this. That's most of the States. Most of the States. It's really, it's not looking good. Stop. And it also goes through all of the different things that the big tech companies are or are not doing to essentially help you avoid getting into a sticky situation in some of these states with your location services turned on and hmm. your end-to-end -end encryption that should be turned on if you wow. are in any of these states or not. It's kind of scary stuff, but it's very informative. I like this uh, style of information. I like a picture. Remember when infographics were like the biggest thing ever around BuzzFeed era? Maybe they're coming back because not many people read. <laughs> it's true. It's, it's very true. Yeah, it's scary. But there's also, I'm surprised there's two companies that we saw pop on the news yes. this week that... Some good news. Yeah, <laughs> have good news. And they're private companies, which is, I don't know, to me, that's surprising. So I follow someone named Julie Schott or Scott. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to say her name. I followed her for a long time. She was a beauty editor at Elle and she pivoted into becoming a founder and started this company called Starface. And they were kind of the first people to do fun pimple patches. And she's just a really smart, cool person. And she also launched this brand called Plus, which was something I think is kind of stupid, but it was a one-time use disposable oh, eco-friendly right. body wash little thingy i don't know it disappeared <laughs> it disappears when you like wash yourself with it and she just announced that along with her business partner who's a man so we don't know his name and amanda ej morrison of mented cosmetics which is an awesome like inclusive beauty line they've started this company called julie that's going to be the morning after pill but branded towards gen z and i don't know how they did this but you're not going to have to use an id there's no age restriction for it and you don't need a prescription to get it and it's again it's like plan b it's a morning after pill it's not an abortion pill so it just prevents ovulation so that you can't get pregnant if you're already pregnant then you it's not going to do anything but I just think it's so cool that they're rolling it out in Walmart in 4,500 stores and that it's just so accessible because for a really long time, plan B was something that you had to like go and have a pres either have a prescription for, or you had to go behind the counter and get it. And it's also, it can be really expensive. And this is priced at like $42, which is, I just, it, I think it's amazing. And they actually started a one for one donation model, uh -huh, Tom's. So, so for great. every Julie sold, they'll donate one. And they're going to donate them to Planned Parenthood, women's shelters, college campus, women's clinics, and maybe some other places they haven't decided yet. But that starts in January, which is... So cool. I don't know. I'm just like, damn, that's, that's fucking cool. I didn't even know that you could... It would never even cross my mind to take something like Plan B and try to make it more modern. Oh, I you thought know? you said it would never cross my mind to take it. I was like, well, girl, <laughs> I've definitely taken it probably too many times. We're built, we're built different. <laughs> that whole industry is so, mis like pharmaceuticals is so mysterious to me. And I'm really curious. They raised $5 million to do this, which is not small for like a seed round. But I'm so curious how they're able to get it to people without an ID and without a prescription and without an age restriction. Yeah, that means as much as we're seeing a lot of backward policy making happening in that realm, that there's also some really great forward momentum in certain states. Is it available yeah. everywhere? All 50 states in Walmart, which is, I just got chills saying that. Like, that's cool. That's crazy. That it's in Walmart. So, but how do they control that then in states that are trying to? Well, it's birth control. So right. It's just, it's just like a heavy dose of progestin, I think. Yeah. And it stops ovulation, mm -hmm. you know, temporarily. 
Interesting, which is actually the same as the so the one that I had found is about this French drug maker who's trying to get a progestin only birth control approved without prescription. So similar to this, oh, cool. it would just be over the counter. It's a French pharmaceutical company called HRA Pharma, as if I know any pharmaceutical <laughs> company's names, but that's who they are. No, you have to say it the French way. Uh, no. <laughs> I'm not even going to. No French on demand here. We don't do public French. <laughs> Only when I feel like it. It's kind of insane, though, that there's a quote here from them that says, for a product that has been available for the last 50 years and used safely by millions of women, we thought it's time to make it more available, which is so kind of obvious, similar to what you were saying yeah. of, or maybe not obvious. It seems like one of those things that... People who are using birth control just get used to. When I've been thinking, okay, I don't want an IUD anymore, I was, of course, then marketed this company that is basically a content platform. I think I sent this to you that helps women essentially weigh all of the options of all of the different birth control services and options out there. Hmm. Yeah, I haven't explored it. I didn't make an account, but it's a whole service dedicated to helping you find the right birth control, whatever your situation is, because there mm -hmm. are so many options now, albeit some more accessible and more affordable than others. But it still blows my mind that there are like no real options for men. I was I have been thinking about this because I am pregnant and I will no longer be pregnant in just a few weeks. And I don't want to get pregnant again anytime soon, I don't think. But I also yeah. don't really want to go on hormones. I'm like, am I really going to stick an IUD up there? <laughs> like, again? Again? That's, I can't even think about that. <laughs> I don't want to. Okay. That's a lot. I think it's really cool that Gen Z is so much more open and understand. It seems like they understand their bodies way better than we did. Like we just didn't really get an education on that stuff. I truly thought that plan B was like an abortion pill, you know, and it was like so toxic for your body. And it I don't know that it's the best. I don't know if it's like, <laughs> but it works. it's not a vitamin, but it's <laughs> yeah. also, you know, it's like there's worse things, right? We call it nutrient rich. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if you like chug it with the green juice, you know, but I'm, I was also thinking about like what, you know, at Walmart, what's in your cart if you're like picking up some Julie, you know, Pedialyte, Gatorade, <laughs> Diet Dr. Pepper, <laughs> Waffle, maybe some gummy vitamins, you know, just to, yeah. you know, keep yourself regular or you're in between birth control and you're like, fuck me pull out method is not super effective or the condom breaks or whatever or god you no know, god all the, all the other horrible reasons that you might have to get birth control next day that you didn't have access to but i think this is in general good for who good for everyone especially good for people who can get pregnant great for everyone this is truly bad for no one helps everyone guess what it grows the economy benefits everybody Hurts nobody. Some uplifting news in the really, really depressing sector of female reproductive health. <laughs> we love yeah. to hear some some positive news. Yay, plan, <laughs> yay, plan B. Yay, Julie. Also, just you guys follow Julie, Julie Scott because yeah, I, I can't wait to see what she does next. She's a so, cool, cool little brand builder. Cool Not cat. little, big brand builder. <laughs> Teeny tiny. <laughs> so small. I have a sexy unique scam. You do, and I can't wait. I need to know. <laughs> Is it a scam or not? Well, truth and time will tell. So mm -hmm. my sister got married this week. Congrats, Mel. Congrats, Mel. She was the most beautiful bride. I cried Truly. the entire time. I ruined every single picture because I couldn't stop crying, even the professional photos. I feel like just that's kinda... just part of your duty as a sister. I think it's just going to be the bit. Like, it's <laughs> going to be like, remember when Michelle was really fucking pregnant and cried the entire wedding? Remember um, when she stole my thunder because she couldn't stop crying? <laughs> I know. I felt so bad. No. You also looked so cute with your bump in that dress. Thanks. You Thanks. guys were beautiful sisters together. <laughs> <laughs> so I got my nails done before the wedding, and I don't get my nails done ever. The last time I got my nails done was when I got married. And my sister was like, you have to get dip nails. Dip is way better than gel. Like you'll like it. It's so much easier. Of course I didn't because I freaked out because I never get my nails done. I was like, I don't know what to do. I ended up getting sort of like a quinceanera nail situation. <laughs> and like, Wait, like, that sounds extremely festive. I took it off already because I was like, I can't go out in public with this. Like it's not good. Okay. What are dip nails? 
Explain. Okay, so dip nail is different than gel. And basically, they put on this polish, doo, 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 and then you, you dip it into this powder. Just and then like... dip it into like this little thing. That's how you dip? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then they put a top coat on top, and it makes it like shiny and gorgeous and it makes it hard and it's supposed to be way better for your nails because I went with my sister to get her nails done and I was talking to the person who was doing them and she's like oh it's so much better it's so much healthier for the nail it looks really good it has all these like minerals in it blah 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 and I was like okay excuse sounds me little, what? <laughs> sounds a little suspicious that was like good for your nails <laughs> you have to like literally file it off like file down to your cuticle to to get it off but okay I love sure. as soon as you're like it has minerals in it people are like okay amazing <laughs> truly <laughs> honestly this like plastic coating that you're <laughs> dipping your nails into it so mineral rich <laughs> that's such a good point that's like how every drink at moon juice is mineral rich that's the update to micronutrients micronutrients and minerals that's true i mean we do need them we, so they we say do. element sponsor us this dip nails is electrolyte <laughs> for rich. your nails do you want your nails to be absolute athletes gatorade style you got to dip them. That's it. It's the only way to fly. These guys engage in sport. They're so hard that they could yeah. do sports. You're not going to crack a nail if it's dip nail. Do you know what they have to go through? Being a working woman? In this economy? You got to be hard as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> you get it. So I, I watched, you know, my sister get it done. And I was like intrigued. Also, the delusion, the ADHD delusion. I was like, I can totally do this. myself. <laughs> I can totally do this. Like, let me go figure out how if I can do this on my own. So of course, I watched like 100 YouTube videos. And then I found out that it's actually very unsanitary to dip your nails into this dip powder when may maybe they've cut off your cuticle and you're bleeding a little bit. And then like 80 other people have used that same dip powder. They're not changing it. They're not fixing it. So they're not sifting the dip. No, they're not. Sift they There's no sift. <laughs> they don't dip. sift the dip. <laughs> they don't sift that dip. So <laughs> I don't trust I it. And so, of course, I was laying awake at night and I'm like, is my sister going to get a staph infection before her wedding? And then I just didn't say anything. She's fine. But I was like, okay, it seems like the right way to do this dip nail is to do it at home. So I may have purchased. I dip, you dip, we dip. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly right. An own, your own personalized dip set. What is in the dip? What is it made of? Know, Microplastics. <laughs> Micro <laughs> and minerals. <laughs> minerals. <laughs> <laughs> it's minerals. Didn't you get it? Oh, Did I stutter the first time? <laughs> Micronutrients and mineral powder, obviously. It makes the nails hard. I don't know. You know that sand art that you used to do when you were a little kid and you were like, do you know what I'm talking about? Making a mandala. <laughs> yeah, yes. Okay. Yeah. You were an advanced child. Remember you? God is dead. That's what three-year-old Wallace was telling people. Uh, meanwhile, I'm like, ooh, a turtle. <laughs> I know what we're doing after we watch Barbarian. We're going to have an arts and craft night. <laughs> Neon pink sand coming to you. Josh is going to get a housewarming present for you by you. It's going to be an LA sandscape. It'll be... <laughs> it's just like the Hollywood sign. Palm trees, Erewhon, the Silver Lake Reservoir with a chain link fence. I buy that. Sand art? Yeah, that sounds cool. Or the sand that you fill bottles with. Did you ever see that? Colored sand bottles? Yes. That's yeah. definitely going to make a comeback. Slime is out. Sand is in. Sand Stunned art. It has it. Gen Z, get on it. What's going on? Come on. <laughs> anyway, that's kind of what it's like. So you can either dip your nails in or you can pour it on top, but then you lose a lot of the powder if you pour it on top. So I'm going to try it this week. And I also just think, wow, what a sexy, unique scam that people are dipping their nails. After literally COVID and monkeypox, people are like, no, no, no. I'm going to dip my, <laughs> my finger. That's, that's like bowling. It's like the nail equivalent of bowling. Yes, I'm. I'm with you on that train of thought. But here's my question. Is it faster? Than what? Than, than <laughs> regular gel nails. Yeah, you don't need the light. It just okay. dries. Immediately. Instantaneously. Immediately. Okay. And what's the process of removal? Do you have to go back to them? I don't know. Oh, that's I think the you, big you have to do the acetone. Just like gel. You have to like take acetone and put it on your nail and then remove. I would just love to see some some of my male friends engage in this activity <laughs> bi-weekly. Takes three hours. Takes forever. Okay. When does it arrive? What brand did you get? This brand called Revel. And it comes with a starter pack of four colors. And I was like, fabulous. That's great. Plus everything that you need. And I hopefully I'm going to get it ASAP, like maybe tomorrow. tomorrow. 
cross your fingers for me. I keep refreshing the shipping because it's like your package is shipped, but UPS is like, no, it hasn't. They just made a label. Oh, I hate that. So annoying. I don't know when I'm going to get it, but I have these naked nails now, which I'm really just playing with fire because I don't have any polish on them and they could break at any moment. So I'm hoping it arrives soon. And yeah, I'm I'm stoked to, to try it. Maybe I'll only use it once, but it was still honestly less expensive than going when, and getting my nails exactly. done. <laughs> the gas that it takes to drive to the nail salon these days. Literally, yeah. Right. And I'm like, do you ever just like feel bad when you go get your nails done? Because I'm like, damn. Yeah. <sighs> I always give like a 45% tip. I'm extremely uncomfortable with the entire experience because I usually want to talk to the people, but sometimes they don't want to talk, which I totally get it. Yeah. And then I just feel like an asshole. And then I'm like, okay, well, I don't want to just be on my phone. I guess I'll just like stare at them and smile. (laughs) And then that's weird. (laughs) No wonder they don't want to talk to you. You're just like staring at them with a deranged smile on your face. Yeah, I know. I'm really excited for this dip nail adventure because I feel like this could be the answer to my twice a year nail routine, which I did it once to go to Italy and and this past month to go to a wedding. Except these ones really didn't last as far as jail gel. <laughs> it's nail jail. Jail nails. <laughs> That's what it is. It's nail jail. It's not restorative <laughs> nail justice because you have nope. to keep going back. <laughs> <laughs> it's a never ending cycle. <laughs> yeah, it's really like I will not do it again. And your nails are trash after you get gel. And it creates that dependency. And then you're like, a sexy unique scam is just getting your nails done, period. Although I do like it. That's what I hate. I like the first day. Oh, yeah. I shared a really good TikTok about why you feel amazing after you get your nails done in the Good For You email a couple of weeks ago. And I was like, that's true. You do. I do feel amazing. We also have to stare at our nails all day while we're typing. Just tip typing, you know, <laughs> this hard work we're doing all damn day. <laughs> I need people to know. Have you ever gotten your nails too long and then it like makes it hard to type? I haven't crossed that threshold yet. It's tough. It's tough. <laughs> Into the coffin nail land. Not even just like a little bit longer than what you're norm, what you're used to. And it like does make it harder to text to do anything. Honestly, how do the Kardashians do so much business? Their nails are so long. I think your fingers get more flexible. You have hyperextension because you're using the the pad. So that's a sexy unique scam. I'm going to try it. See if it's all a scam. We'll find out next week. Speaking of scams, this season is Rich Bitch Autumn, which bitch autumn and scented candle spooky season it's scented candle honestly like heaven so we have a scented candle haunted cart and i found some really interesting candles first off scented candles are elite like i don't care not yankee candles obviously but just scented candles in general like they're always a good present like hostess gift get a scented candle instead of a bottle of wine Someone's getting engaged, give them a scented candle instead of those little ring things that you can put your rings in because now they have to live with a boy in the, and share a bathroom with a boy. Like going through a breakup, no. get them a scented candle instead of like trying to go out and have a sexy night because no, I'm not in the mood to be sexy with anyone unless it's the person who like made the scented candle and it put together the sad breakup playlist on Spotify. You know, they're just like, they're, they're the best. Cross really board. Just, I wholeheartedly agree. And you've just opened my mind up to the fact that I haven't been putting out what I would like to be receiving. <laughs> <laughs> I have not been gifting enough scented candles. <laughs> well, you got to stock up on them. And that's the other great thing about them is mm-hmm. that you can stock up on them just like you mm-hmm. can with like greeting cards. And then you mm-hmm. always have a stock of candles to give to people. That is the life of luxury I intend to live. (laughs) Extra scented candles in my closet. An entire drawer of scented candles. (laughs) Manifest that. Okay. No, but (laughs) have you ever tried making a scented candle? Have you, you've had one of those craft nights for sure. No, I've made candles before, but not scented ones. And I, it didn't work out. I have all the, all the fixings to make candles and not, no candles that I've made. Well, there you go. So to your dipped nail adventure, (laughs) I was like, I can definitely make a bomb scented candle. Why okay. are they so expensive? Let me just get a kit and try it out. I did with this with a friend a few years ago, and we quickly realized that to buy all the supplies, 
not cheap. So you might as well have a side hustle ready to go because <laughs> you just bought enough ingredients to make at least 60 candles. Oh yeah, you have to buy in bulk. You're yeah. not you're not making one or two. You're going homesteader. And they're really hard to make because you realize that there are superior, you know, soy is superior. So is beeswax Absolutely. in its own way. Absolutely. All the wicks and all the scents have different burn rates. And it's really easy to make really shitty candles. Oh, yeah. Well, so. I stumbled upon this person who has a job that I want, which is oh. candle influencer. <laughs> Her name is, I want this woman's life. Her name is Ashley Hosmer, and she is a candle influencer. And she has this Google Doc. I'll share it with you of all of her favorite candles and she like rates them based on things that I didn't even know about like tunneling which is when it doesn't it doesn't yes, burn down clean exactly and all you need to do is try making it once and you'll learn that tunneling is a fine art that you will pay lots of money for <laughs> right and then there's like throw which is like how yes. much scent is there because there's nothing worse than buying a candle and being like still smells like shit in here what's going on right yeah it, it needs to like permeate but not be too strong you don't want the throw to be too far you want it to be Geographic. maybe three to six feet from we the need area like an aura basically yeah. the candle should have an aura but it yeah. shouldn't be a sort of larger than life aura no you don't want it to be a tbt axe body spray exactly no right. one wants that that's not it or like black ice you know those little oh, air yeah. fresheners no absolutely not this is not an uber ma'am this okay. is my house <laughs> okay this woman quite a niche curatorial endeavor I just want her job because I'm sure she gets so many free candles and I'm like, genius. She Honestly, She definitely genius. is living that luxury stocked candle life. She has to be. And she has a big scoring breakdown, tunneling as part of it, throw as part of it, blah, blah, blah. But we'll include the link in the show notes so people can go check out her. Who's top rated? She has some very expensive candles on here. But Boy Smells are in Brightland and Diptyque are some nice. of her biggest ones. And then Maison Louis Marie. Which we like. I like those, yeah. Other land, those are, and Rowan. Those are mm. some of her big recommendations. I really like all the Boy Smells candles. They Me do too. smell really good. They cornered the market of the not, a, not super cheap, but pretty affordable scented candle game. And they're unique scents. And they're like anywhere from 32 to $39. And that's a good price for a candle, you know? That's nothing to sneeze at. But it lasts long enough that you're not devastated when it's gone. You're like, mm. okay. Got my money's worth. That was great. So which ones are haunting you? Oh my God, I have so many. So I am a fall girly. I want everything to sort of smell like pumpkin spice, but not in a Yankee candle way, more in a like, mm, we're in the cottage way. You know mm. what I mean? I want a pine scent. I want a cinnamony. I want a clove. I want fresh. I want it to smell like fresh air. I want it to smell crisp in my house. I do not like floral scents and I do not like a fruity scents. That's Those are the not problem. If someone were to gift you a hostess gift and it was apple pear candle, it would be oh, like I, just. I gave it away. I gave, yeah. I'd, re, I'd re gift that. Or but then honestly, you would be known as the person who gifted that. It's <laughs> true. <laughs> That's so true. That's a heck. Damn, I didn't think about that. <laughs> no, those those are not for me. Those are like deeply on the spectrum of no. But I do like woodsy, fiery scents, sort of like warm scents. I'll also go for a weird gourmand scent. Like mm. this one I found, sautéed garlic from Lucali and Joya. It's a Wait. scented garlic candle. Okay. Sautéed garlic. I also had one of those, except for it is the Herbe e Aromi candle from Lucali. Oh my God, really? Yes. <laughs> oh my God, amazing. So that's, that's your weird, maybe a fun, that could be a fun hostess gift. Yeah. Well, also because... I've never been to Lucali, so I feel like I could experience Lucali from afar. Right. The pizza joint that is always <laughs> super hard to get into in Brooklyn. One day. Yeah. One day. I think there's also like tomato scents are generally, they're kind of popular. East York Street ha is a cool candle company from Ohio. Mm. And they have great, some really good scents, but they have a tomato and tobacco leaf. And that's not fall flavored, I know. But mm. it does, it is interesting. The other candles that I love are Diaz and Durga because they have great perfume and these are expensive. They're like $65, but they're fantastic. And the one I, I really like is Portable Fireplace. It's just like, it's very fall flavored. It's really good. I love that. And then I am eyeing the Otherland Woodlands. It's their scented, one of their fall candles and it's Palo Santo, Redwood Bark and Smoked Vanilla. 
So that just sounds mm. right up my alley. What about you? What, what's on your haunted cart? Okay. Well, I had another similar one to you from DS and Durga, but this one specifically I was drawn to because the last descriptor is fancy sneakers. And then they Ooh. also would like you to know that it's vegan. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. What brand is this? This is DS and Durga. It's called Parquet Leather. But they want you oh. to know it's vegan leather. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's the mushroom leather. It's pleather. That was definitely a last minute copy editing call. They're like, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> just make sure you let them know it's vegan. <laughs> it's very important. It's a vibe. Yeah. So top notes are orange leather, peach baskets. Heart notes are red oak, rubber. And base notes are maple wood and kicks. Kicks, like sneakers. Not kicks. How did they bottle the cereal. that? Yeah. I don't I do not know what that would smell like, but I would love to try and smell it. I would like to purchase. I would like to test it out. But yeah. as we learned in Italy when we actually made our own perfume, we did. It's not as easy as you think. All of our perfumes smell the same. I hate mine. <laughs> Ethan and I, we basically have the same one. I'm like, <laughs> it smells the same. <laughs> and his was so different. He was just like cedar, oak. <laughs> like, I know. It's like, okay, yeah, we don't, I don't know. It was a good experiment though. It, it oh, did it teach great. me a lot. It knocked my confidence down, my cockiness that I could just like be a perfume, perfumier. No, absolutely not. No, I grew so much respect for that profession. I literally know nothing in this department. <laughs> Even after we spent all that time, I was like, turns out I hate most scents. So, yeah, I guess I like the smell of butter, which was one of them. <laughs> yeah. Butter all day, every day. Yeah. So I had that one. I had that Lucali one. Then I have an extremely expensive one that is more of like an aspirational candle. Okay. Great. From JJ Ound, this... I don't even know. I've never said that out loud. I do really like a lot of what they make, but only from an aspirational sense. You know, those brands mm -hmm. where you just love to look at it, but you're always kind of like, mm, not worth it. Not for me. Right. And it's like maybe a bit too esoteric scent wise to be like, this is definitely something I want my house to smell like. Wow. So this one, slightly esoteric, it is notes of sleek graphite, chalk, and cut wood minerality there you go it's a healthy candle right there it has minerals in it <laughs> this is for your health this candle <laughs> actually your insurance should cover it <laughs> yeah hsa scented candle season use it up <laughs> it's time <laughs> <laughs> and then my last one is honestly a boy spells one so not many new things here i just love the name of this candle is called park life oh i like that it's got notes of fresh greenery, zesty ginger, and warm sandalwood. And I feel like mm. scented candles are something I could buy just because of the name or not buy just because of the name. You know, like the Goop vagina candle smells great. I will never buy that. No, nope. but it does smell good. I'm sure it does, but I'm not going to use it. It's not part of the brand. No, it's very similar to wine in that way where I'm like, well, I will buy this just based off of how the bottle looks. If Look the name label. is good <laughs> and if the if the container is good, that makes a difference too. Mm. the mm. vessel, if you will. Mm. Some might say we are aesthetic, functional and aesthetic. It's got to sit on or in the wine shelf. It's got to look good. It's true. That is my scented candle cart and i think this conversation has taught me that i really need to give more candles <laughs> if i, I so. if i hope to receive them yeah, you need, exactly <laughs> that was that quote you gotta to like if you want more love in your life you have to create more love something like yeah. that it's the same thing with candles if you want more candles in your life you need to give more candles watch out <laughs> i know what i'm getting you you're, you're, like, present. <laughs> you're like i am so ready to receive <laughs> a drawer of candles <laughs> binders a full of supply. candles <laughs> yeah <laughs> Speaking of which, if anyone knows a candle company that would love to sponsor this podcast. <laughs> we clearly love candles. <laughs> yes, we will 110% support you <laughs> if you give us things Obviously. and money. <laughs> <laughs> if you give us things and money, both, both of the two. <laughs> for sure. Well, thank you for listening. And this week, we're going to give away, you guessed it, a scented candle. candle. It has to be. It has to be a scented candle. We are going to give away park life because who doesn't want to live a park life? And we want you to have 
more par in your life. And more smiles. All you have to do is write a super sexy, unique, funny, smart review. <laughs> JK, all you have to do Pressure. is write any <laughs> any five-star review. <laughs> and we will pick you on the pod next week and we'll let you know who wins. It's that simple. That's it. Thanks for tuning in. Don't change. We're due. Bye. Bye. Good For You is produced by yours truly, Wallace Miller Blanchard. Our theme song is by Parallel Dance Ensemble. And our wonderful editing is done by Softer Sound Studio. You can find more information about at the link in our show notes.